and welcome. You're watching FII. I'm Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor. Now, so Elon Musk has invested $1.5 billion in Bitcoin. Along with that, some uh, his company soon, Tesla, will start accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment for its electric cars. Now, the world's richest man allocating $1.5 billion of his company's treasury to Bitcoin has made the conversation around this extremely controversial cryptocurrency pretty much mainstream. Now, on Elon Musk's announcement, Bitcoin surged to an all-time high, jumped as much as 20% in one day, getting to almost $45,000 for the first time. That's what one Bitcoin costs. In fact, as we speak, one Bitcoin costs around 35 lakh rupees. Let that sink in. Now, I'm sure chatter around cryptocurrency and Bitcoin has begun in your homes as well. But what exactly is Bitcoin? How does it work? Is it even legal in India? And most importantly, is it safe? Is it reliable? Can it possibly be a replacement for national currencies in the newer future? Over the next 30 minutes, we will be answering all these questions for you and decoding the Bitcoin phenomena for you. But, 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 I really want to underline this. Before we go ahead, please do not take what you hear on FII today as an investment advice at all. Follow discretion and talk to your own financial advisor before you invest or trade in Bitcoin. That being said, let's go across to Rubina now who takes you through how the journey of Bitcoin actually began. First launched in 2009, Bitcoin is a kind of cryptocurrency or digital currency that exists completely online. By its very nature, the currency is decentralized without a single central bank to administer it and the currency is stored in digital wallets. These wallets are backed by private and public keys for security and the public key is what lets users transact with each other. All transactions are verified and recorded in a public ledger called the blockchain with complete transparency ensuring that the system cannot be cheated. Because of its decentralized nature and the anonymity associated with it, the currency can be easily traded across users and countries without identifying the person who holds the Bitcoin. The popularity of Bitcoin has spurred a range of alternate cryptocurrency including Ethereum, Dogecoin and Binance. In India, Bitcoin stands in a grey area of illegality. As of now, it is not legal to trade Bitcoin. However, the cryptocurrency and regulation of official digital currency bill aims to ban Bitcoin. Instead, the Indian government seeks to create its own national cryptocurrency. India temporarily banned crypto transactions in 2018. However, the bill was overturned by the Supreme Court after cryptocurrency exchanges filed a lawsuit. Now, with the growing global acceptance of the digital fiat as legal tender, it remains to be seen exactly how the Indian government will proceed with this draft regulation. All right, now that you know that, let me tell you some bizarre stuff from the world of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Bitcoin was actually founded by Satoshi Nakamoto, but this is believed to be a pseudonym and nobody really knows the true identity of the person who wrote the original white paper. At one point, it was also believed that the Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk himself created Bitcoin. However, Musk has categorically denied these claims. Now, one of the world's first Bitcoin transaction was actually to buy a pizza. And guess what? A man called Laszlo paid 10,000 Bitcoins, which today's worth would be close to 3,500 crore if my math is right. All for one pizza. Imagine that. Another bizarre story is that of James Howells, a man from Wales, who trashed a hard drive that contained about 7,500 bitcoins. Now, you can make the conversion yourself this time and the man now wants to dig through the landfill to locate those bitcoins worth millions of dollars at this point. Now, due to its anonymity, bitcoin is often also used and much criticized for its illegal activities on the dark web portals as well. So that's one of the reasons why it's mostly criticized. But where does India stand in this cryptocurrency system? We, like we explained earlier, that it's a bit of a grey zone at the moment. But today something interesting happened. When the junior minister of finance, Anurag Thakur, when asked about bitcoins in parliament, said on record that government will soon bring a bill on cryptocurrencies as existing laws are inadequate to deal with the issues concerning them. He also added that regulatory bodies like RBI and SEBI do not have any legal framework to directly regulate cryptocurrencies as they, know they are not currencies or assets or securities or commodities issued by any identifiable user. 
also adding that a committee of secretaries chaired by the cabinet secretary himself has already prepared a report on cryptocurrency and given it to the government. So this is pretty much becoming mainstream. Are we going to have a law on this very soon? I'm sure you have lots of questions like I have on the program today when it comes to Bitcoin. And we've got an excellent panel for you. People who actually live in the world of Bitcoin and they are on the program with us today. All right. We have Satvik Vishwanath. He's a CEO, co-founder of uh, you know, Coin. We have Nishchal Shetty. He's a CEO of Wazir X. We have Shivam Thakral, co-founder and CEO of BayuCoin. And we also have Ashish Singhal, CEO and co-founder of Coin Switch Kuber. All right. Uh, welcome, gentlemen, on this very first mainstream national media conversation on Bitcoin. So this is quite a time uh, for all of us. Let me first give the word to Satwik. Satwik, you are somebody who trades in, uh, who has a trading platform for Bitcoin. First, just explain to our viewers, what do you do? Okay, so uh, a user who would want to buy Bitcoin would come to our platform. Hmm. then provide their KYC documents to get their account verified. And then they would transfer Indian rupees from their bank account to our company bank account, which can then be used to buy Bitcoin for themselves. And when they sell Bitcoin, again, they get the money that can be withdrawn to a bank account. Um, and apart from just the normal trading platform for buy and sell Bitcoins, we also provide an exchange where customers would place bid and ask orders and we provide a matching interest to match them across to the quarter party customers. Okay, hold on, hold on. You're saying a lot of things. I don't want my viewers getting confused at this point. You are essentially saying that it's like a trading platform, it's like the stock market, where you can directly buy Bitcoin through your platform and you can also bid in a sense that I can lock a figure at which I yeah. want to buy or sell Bitcoin and you will facilitate that transaction. Interesting That's that you correct. mentioned that all the KYC forms, etc. So this is pretty much legitimate business happening in the country. On that note, let me also bring in Nishchal Shetty. Nishchal is the CEO of Wazir X. Please care to explain what a day in the life of a Bitcoin securities exchange person is like. So I, um, you know, there's there's never a dull day in crypto. Um, hmm. Uh, every every other day, you either have something really great like uh, Elon Musk's uh, Tesla buying a large amount of Bitcoin, or sometimes you have these uh, uh, fearful news like uh, some government, uh, you know, uh, taking a negative stand. Hmm. Uh, but I think in general, what we see is uh, it's our our objective and mission is to help people get involved in the whole Bitcoin uh, revolution that's happening globally. I would say. And uh, uh, we are like the entry point when you want to buy your first Bitcoin, uh, so, you think of uh, a, a crypto exchange and that's right. where we come in. Okay. So how many customers do you have in India? We have over a million customers and uh, wow. uh, in terms of uh, volume, we are the largest in the country today. When you say volume, you mean the number of people or the amount of the trade that you're working in? the amount of trade that happens on a daily yeah. basis. Okay, and please tell me who are these people, who these 1 million people who are investing in cryptocurrency? See, they are, uh, they're, you know, people just like you and me, but uh, the, the largest age group is in the 24 to 30 year range. Hmm. Um, um, mostly youngsters who are attracted to the whole uh, Bitcoin new technology. And, uh, uh, you know, I think they also have disposable income, uh, hmm. higher risk appetite. So uh, these no, are the but large. One second, part. one bit uh, when Bitcoin at the moment costs about thirty-five lakhs. So how are these youngsters trading in it? So I think that's a, a, that's a good question and a big large misconception hmm. is that you don't have to buy an entire Bitcoin. You okay. could buy Bitcoin worth just five hundred rupees. The way okay. you buy a small piece of gold, you don't hmm. have to buy an entire kilo of gold. Uh, that's the same concept in Bitcoin. You can divide it by uh, eight. Uh, 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 like point, uh, uh, you know, zero, zero uh, till eight decimals. Hmm. So, so you can really buy a really small part of uh, Bitcoin and you can start with it even as low as 100, 200 rupees. Wow. Okay. That's news to me. And I'm sure lots of the reactions today and answers will be news to me and a lot of yours as well. But let me move forward on my panel. We've got Shivam Thakral. He's the co-founder and CEO of Bayou Coin. Shivan, I, I spoke earlier and he said that he also has about 3.5 lakh customers. 
in India alone and uh, Shivam is your company and trading companies like these are these registered in the country because we are still in the grey area on where does it stand we don't know if the government is going to ban it what's going to happen so the business that you do is pretty much legit yeah so we we are registered uh, properly under mca in india so we have cryptocurrency in our aoa moa so we are like uh, we have uh, told the mc that we will be doing crypto business in india so that's uh, we, we started uh, our company with all so right we are doing it yeah Right. Let me also bring in Ashish Singhal. Ashish is the co-founder and CEO of uh, Coin Switch Kuber, and uh, Ashish recently started out a hashtag and a petition which says India wants crypto. Okay. I first India needs to understand crypto for that. Governments need to understand crypto for that. But Ashish, what makes you do this? And you run a business just trading bitcoins. Sure. So let me address both the points. Uh, first, uh, CoinSwitch Kuber is a retail brokerage where people can come and buy, sell crypto as low as hundred bucks hmm. onto the platform. Uh, we we are the uh, biggest uh, platform in India today with over thirty lakh users in just last seven months. Hmm. Uh, we've been backed by the likes of Revit, Sequoia, the founders of Coinbase itself. Uh, coming to your point uh, regarding, uh, you know, hmm. uh, our our user base is pretty young. And pretty uh, less than 24 years of age, 60% of our user base is less than 24 so years. So basically, people age. who have a risk appetite. Yes, who uh, so it's a risk versus reward, and mm. they can invest as Nishil pointed out. They mm. can invest as low as 100 bucks on onto the platform, mm. and that's where CoinSwitch Kuber mm. uh, stands today, right? And mm. uh, coming to the hashtag and the campaign that we are mm. starting to support cryptocurrencies in India, it's called India Wants Wants Bitcoin. Hmm. and it's not created by me it's all of us together hmm. nischal satvik hmm. and all uh, coin dcx from uh, somit from coin dcx we are all coming together hmm. to create a community and helping our users voice their support for crypto to their hmm. members of the parliament sure right? so we are Now, creating why that that's that's important or not is something we'll discuss over the program because this is a show where so many basics need to be answered what we've done is we've got some faq questions which i'm going to throw out at our panel and we'll hear from them number one thing which i think people really need to understand about cryptocurrency is that who decides the price of bitcoin and i'd like satvik to take that question please yeah it's it's usually the buyer and seller like for example how it happens on the commodity exchange when people are buying and selling gold or oil so there is uh, a buyer and seller who is meeting at a particular price and the price is getting influenced by a lot of the uh, factors internationally uh, so in the similar way here for example when, when elon musk uh, you know said something about bitcoin on twitter or when tesla uh, in tesla's investment about 1.5 million dollars in the bitcoin came out uh, in the news and such thing so these hmm. these as well influence the price of bitcoin but at the end of the day it is just the buyer and seller who will decide um, and as long as there is a trade happening that will become the Uh, previous so all price. this is happening yeah. on several portals right yeah that's right so so th this is like global thing because i mean it, for example if it is equity market so hmm. it starts at 9:30 and closes at 4 hmm. but when it comes to cryptocurrencies it's like a 24 hour market 24 by 7 all time it exists because uh, it's getting traded in one or the other part of the country so it's it, it's actually an you know ongoing thing and uh, the the price keeps on fluctuating uh for i mean for the entire like whenever we see there is i know how very bitcoin. fascinating is that so that brings me to the second question then satvik how does one trade in bitcoin then see uh, when when someone want to buy and sell bitcoin is actually simpler so they would they would send money to an exchange and uh, try to buy it by hmm. the bitcoin and the exchange will usually provide a price that they can be bought and uh, sold but there is also another market where people would use bitcoin to buy other cryptocurrencies like ether or doge coin hmm. um etc as well so that that also happens on the exchanges uh, but yeah at, at the end it's it's all about they place a bit order and ask order and there is the matching engines which will match them across their customer sometimes hmm. internationally as well yeah hmm. okay okay third question and i think this is what all my viewers need to know is it legal to trade in bitcoins to own bitcoins to invest in bitcoins and why don't uh, ashish why don't you answer that question sure 
so this is legal in India. Uh, so legality and illegality only defined by regulations. Hmm. In India today, there aren't any regulations uh, which. Then regulate... you can't technically call it legal. Uh, so, okay, so if any law doesn't define hmm. what is legal, if I'm walking on the road and nobody has defined in a law that walking on the road is legal, hmm. then does it become illegal? That's the question that we are answering today, right? Hmm. So the whole point of cryptocurrency is that that it's a, uh, it's a it's an asset class. It's not a currency. So it's not here to replace INR. Hmm. It's a new asset class, which is a digital gold uh, comparable and where hmm. different people around the world are investing and we... Uh, as Indians are providing this opportunity to a lot of other Indians to get their hands into cryptocurrencies. As okay, in are there any countries across the world which have legalized it? Yes, so there are many countries around the world, US being the biggest example. Hmm. US give out licenses for different exchanges, similar to how stock operates in India, right? Hmm. Stock is re regulated by SEBI. There are guidelines that any stock brokerage has to follow to, uh, uh, to operate a stock brokerage in India. That is exactly how US has uh, uh, legalized it or regularized it uh, by creating uh, a license for okay. regulating cryptocurrencies in different hmm. various different states in hmm. the US. Right. That brings me to the next question. What exactly makes cryptocurrency so volatile? Is that just the trade and exchange market over there? Why don't, uh, Shivam, why don't you answer that? So I think uh, it's it's in the nascent stage, uh, although it, it's been there for like more than 10 years, but still um, like the people involved is comparatively uh, very less and in comparison to the traditional market. So hmm. that brings in the volatility in the market. All right. On that note, I have so, to slip into a very quick break. I have lots of more questions and lots of more interesting information to gather and learnings to do on the program. So stay tuned. FII on the Bitcoin phenomena is on. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Uh, here we are on FII trying to decode what exactly is the cryptocurrency phenomena, what exactly is Bitcoin all about. So my next question is, and I would like uh, Nishchal to take it, please. Uh, you know, we understand like Tesla and uh, SpaceX has invested. There is also talk that Apple might invest in Bitcoin now. Are there some Indian companies, etc., who have invested? And is this something that you recommend for everyone? Um, and there's no official data as such or public data that uh, suggests any large Indian companies have invested. Hmm. And I think it has to do more with the regulatory uncertainty in the country right now, uh, where the retail investors have uh, wholeheartedly come in. And I'm aware of uh, maybe some family offices investing, uh, but nothing yet on the large uh, uh, companies. But I think now with the whole Tesla news, I'm pretty sure some companies will want to, because if you look at what Tesla did, uh, they decided that about 7% of their cash reserves can go into a higher risk uh, uh, category mm -hmm. investment. So I think now Indian companies with large cash reserves might explore that uh, as an option. All right. So you're saying not a full-fledged investment, but something that you do on the side just to build a portfolio of sorts. That's what you're suggesting. Okay, next question. Uh, and I would like Shivam to take that. Indian governments have indicated I am and again, and even today, like I said, that they could well be banning uh, cryptocurrency altogether. Where does that leave people, these lakhs of people who've already invested in it? I think uh, the cryptocurrency in it itself is a phenomena which can't be banned. If, if we talk about Bitcoin, it cannot it's be banned. What do you mean by that? So, cannot be banned in terms of no uh, single organization uh, or any centralized organization controls it. So, you mm -hmm. can't go to their door and ask them to shut down. So, you, it's, it's more of uh, even we have we are running nodes at our end and uh, uh, us similar to us a lot of people are running nodes so you have to go to a single but they node and close shut it down. platforms like yours so uh, that will only uh, will stop the trading through the banking channels but it won't stop uh, bitcoin you could hold your bitcoin with you yourself in your computer or, or your, on your paper but uh, it doesn't mean uh, so what that will bitcoin you do with this then you should see uh, there would be some uh, it's it's not just an indian phenomena uh, that uh, bitcoin is being traded only in india so hmm. you could read it all across the globe so it's acceptable all across the globe uh, 
not on in all countries but in maximum countries. so you're essentially saying even if it's banned in india people can still find out a way and figure it out and treat it in other countries that it is actually legal so the way ahead is actually quite fascinating last question one satvik to come in you know there's a lot of chatter about this bitcoin bubble which is going to burst very soon people are saying it's run its course the best time to buy has already gone now it's become mainstream what are your thoughts last 30 seconds yeah see when we see the price charts at bitcoin right so there was always time when it was cheaper and uh, i think like you cannot go back in time to buy it hmm. but on the other side even when bitcoin did hit 1 dollar which is like 70 rupees people thought that that's already a bubble and it is going to burst okay it, it cannot sustain a 1 dollar price hmm. and now hmm. we are sitting and discussing like how it hmm. has come up to 5000 dollars and I also think if you see the number of people who have already involved in cryptocurrency trading to say the people involved in uh, the commodity or equity trading. So there is mm -hmm. at least a growth of uh, more than 10 times of, of wherever it is right now. But again, we All will right. obviously need support from the countries and governments so that it continues to support the innovation, investment and employment opportunities. So I hope you know, India will strongly consider that. All right, this is a different world altogether that we're talking about. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us and giving us your insight into this. At the end of the program, I just want to say this one more time. NDTV is not endorsing. and Don't take this as advice at all. Please follow your own discretion and follow the advice of your investment bankers before you make any investments or trade into Bitcoin. But it looks like at the moment that it's here to stay. That's it from me. Bye-bye.